So we move across to, to EU-Japan partnership and global data flow facilitation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Director General for International Cyber Economy Policy from METI, Mr. Kiyoshi Mori. Thank you, President Yamamoto and Mr. Hopwood. So the title of this panel discussion is EU-Japan, how digital trade can support business. The subtitle is Toward Fair and Global Business Environment. It is a very important topic, and today I'm happy that great panelists who are experts to this topic um, get together. And it is also fascinating that Dr. Andreas Gedela attend this meeting from BMWI. We only have one hour for the entire discussion today, so I will be brief. First, I would like to stress the importance of promoting free and open trade. EU and Japan should take initiatives on this trade issue under the current a little bit fragile situation. I am not directly involved in the EU-Japan EPA negotiations, but really hope that both sides can reach an agreement in principle in a very, very near future. Second. I will talk about the digital trade issue, which is the theme of today. Firstly, I would like to stress the importance of making international consensus about the basic principle on how to further facilitate global data flows. McKinsey Global Institute made a good report upon digital globalization last year, which said that the economic effect of international data flows surpassed that of traditional trade in goods. According to this report, the data flows account for 2.8 trillion US dollars in global GDP growth in 2014, a larger impact than traditional global trade in goods. In addition, the report said that there are quite a lot of opportunities for SMEs to participate in the data-related businesses. This is a very interesting report, and we are now requesting OECD and other international organizations to further enhance their tasks to measure various issues upon the digital economy, including the measurement of digital trade. In such an environment, it is important to discuss how to face this newly emerging cyber society. Let me compare the role of public sectors in the sphere of the real space and the cyberspace briefly. In the real space, the company has been originally separated by each country and each region, and the role of our international community has been to connect separate economies in such a way that not only developed countries, but also developing countries can enjoy the benefits out of the coordination. Then, various actions have been made in the real world with the establishment of the United Nations, G7, WTO, OECD, and mega FTAs to discuss and establish better ways to integrate the economy. In the cyber world, however, the world has been originally integrated by nature. Only if people can use the internet, they can access to the in integrated economy. It is a complete, op complete opposite to the real world. Therefore, the first mission of our international community in the cyberspace has been to increase the accessibility to the internet throughout the world and to extinguish the digital divide through the multi-stakeholder approach. This mission is, in my opinion, relatively easy to come to a consensus as a principle. However, there has been another difficult issue arising on the table, which is how to make a balance between this nature of integration of the internet and some concerns against this integration. This may relate to privacy issues, competitive condition, local content requirements, and in some cases, national sovereignty. A couple of reports point out that the number of regulations related to data localization has recently increased. One argument exists that in a relatively big market, it may be economically rational for this market to have a separated and partly independent internet space with such technologies like firewalls, while at the same time enjoy the global communications through the present internet system. 
it is a measure that intend to block their own domestic market while at the same time try to enjoy the benefits out of the global market. It is a very similar argument which we have experienced in the GATT GATT and WTO in the real world. It is clear that it does not have an economic rationale from the global perspective. And I think we should keep one internet as one internet. At the G7 ICT ministers meeting that was held for the first time in 21 years in Takamatsu, Japan last April, we are personally uh, I personally welcomed German delegations uh, at the uh, time at the Takamatsu airport. But at the Iseshima summit last May that followed the ICT ministers' meeting, we agreed upon the following three digital principles. That is, number one, promoting free flow of information. Number two, preventing localization barriers. And number three, protecting critical source code. I think that we should reaffirm the importance of these principles at the G7 level this year and beyond, and expand the discussions in various international fora, including G20 and APEC. In other words, without such international discussion, we might fall into spaghetti ball situations in regulations in the cyberspace. For regulations themselves, I think those should be at the minimum if current platform services have some social problems related to privacy issues, fake news, and others, for example, our government should consider endorsing some business environments where startups or present big companies can invest or innovate new internet services, which will be more compatible with these social issues, which have to come before deciding to enforce some new regulations. <clears throat> I admit, however, that basic regulatory framework is necessary in the uprising IoT society, including competition policy, de facto or de jure standardization, personal data transfer, consumer protection, theft of trade secret, and access to public data. But I would also like to point out that at least some international information exchanges upon the level and the content of each regulation at each country or each regional level is needed in order to keep one internet as one internet. Lastly, I would like to touch upon the issue of climate, climate change issues, global climate change issues. I had been in charge of climate change policies for a long time. The policy goal between the EU and Japan was and is the same, that is, to decrease the amount of carbon dioxide emission drastically. But the policy approach between the two was a little bit different. The EU tried to give carbon dioxide a value, more precisely a negative value, and then established emission trading market. We, Japan, adopted public and private partnership approach where so many industrial associations made aggressive voluntary plans for carbon dioxide emission reduction, while our government enforced stricter energy conservation regulations by the name of top run approach. Looking at it, I see that our policy making approach is a little bit different. In my view, the EU tends to start policy making from a rather conceptual way, while Japan tends to start from a rather pragmatic way. I think this tendency also applies to the discussion of policy making related to data economy. For example, in the field of data ownership, standardization of reference model, liability, and privacy issues. Just we did for climate change policy making, it is very important that EU and Japan initiate the discussion on the digital economy policies. Meeting with our Minister Seko and the German Minister Madame Zepris, uh, Zepris yesterday, and the meeting with our Minister and Commissioner Ansip and Commissioner Madame Europa today were very successful. And we have already made various discussions so far. For example, for the privacy issue, Jan Carlson knows better than I about the Japanese systems 
of personal uh, information privacy acts. I also appreciate the German presidency for G20, where we, Japan, would like to contribute more to the discussion of, by, which is initiated by Germany. We will enhance our discussion and our cooperation in the field of digital economy more and more. For this purpose, I'm really excited to have, the, to have you, uh, uh, Andrew San, and, except, and, and exceptional panelists here. I myself would like to learn a lot from this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together for Mr. Kiyoshi Mori.